good day ladies and gentlemen this is dr Ferrer, your professor our topic for today is on population we'll try to answer the question where is the world's population distributed first we're going to find where population concentration is being located according to research approximately two-thirds of the world's population is clustered into four regions and these are east asia south asia southeast asia and western europe now why do you think the population is being concentrated in these areas what do they have in common among these regions of course one is due to the presence of ocean or river sources another is some low-lying areas in these regions and of course the fertile soil and temperate climate as you can see these are almost all based on physical geography as you can see on the slides you have here the world population cartogram as of 2008 this cartogram displays countries by the size of their population rather than their land area and uh, only countries with 50 million or more people are named in this cartogram so to name a few you have of course uh, china you have india you have the united states you have uh, france then you have also japan russia and uh, indonesia and of course the philippines is one of these countries now let's look at these regions as mentioned earlier we start with east asia it has been said that one fourth of the world's people live in east asia is the largest cluster of inhabitants and according to research five out of six of the people in this concentration live in the people's republic of china considered as the world's most populous country talking about the chinese population they are clustered near the pacific coast and in several fertile river valleys and one half of the people in china live in rural areas where they work as farmers while in japan and south korea population is not distributed uniformly only more than three-fourths of the japanese and koreans live in urban areas now let's have south asia this the second largest concentration of people is more than one-fourth is found in south asia and of course india the world's second most populous country contains more than three-fourths of the south asia population concentration and uh, much of this area's population is concentrated along the plains of the indus and the ganges rivers and added to this population is also concentrated near the india's two long coast lines and compared with the chinese most people in south asia are also farmers now let's move with the southeast asia it is said that the world's fourth largest population cluster after europe is in southeast asia mostly on a series of islands and one of these countries found in southeast asia is indonesia which consists of uh, 13,677 islands and is the world's fourth most populous country while in the philippines several islands also contain high population concentrations while for in the china population they are clustered along several river valleys and deltas at the southern at the southeastern tip of the ancient mainland and the high percentage of people in southeast asia 
also work as farmers. To sum it up, the three Asian population concentrations comprise over half of the world's total population, but together they also live on less than 10% of the Earth's land area. And said result of a study is uh, said to be held true 2,000 years ago. Now from Asia, let's move to Europe. Combining the populations of Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and the European version of Russia, it forms the world's third largest population cluster, one-ninth of the world's people. But in these uh, regions, three out of four of Europe's inhabitants live in cities. So, in doing so, they only import food and other resources from rural areas. So, history tell, told us that due to the search for additional resources, this was a major incentive for Europeans to colonize other parts of the world during the previous six centuries. So aside from Asia and Europe, there are still other population clusters and the largest population concentration in the Western Hemisphere is in the Northeastern United States and Southeastern Canada. So about 2% of the world's people live in these areas and out of that, less than 5% of them are farmers. On the other hand, another 2% of the world's population is clustered in West Africa, especially along the south, facing the Atlantic coast. Approximately half in Nigeria, and the other half is divided among several small countries west of Nigeria. And out of those people, most of them work in agriculture. So aside from those regions which are thickly populated, there are also regions which are sparsely populated. Few people live in regions that are too dry, too wet, too cold, or too mountainous for agriculture. Three-fourths of the world's population lives on only 5% of the Earth's surface. The portion of the Earth's surface occupied by permanent human settlement is called Eukami. The portion of the Earth's surface occupied by permanent human settlement is called Ecumeni. The areas of the Earth that humans consider too harsh for occupancy have diminished over time, while the Ecumeni has increased. Even 500, 500 years ago, much of uh, North America and Asia lay outside the Ecumen. As you can see in the illustration and uh, the slide uh, showing the expansion of the Ecumen 5,000 years before Christ until 1900s. The Acumeni or the Persian of the Earth with permanent human settlement has expanded to cover most of the world's land area. So from uh, 5000 BC, you have only some parts of, uh, of Europe which are being occupied by human settlement, comparing with that of 19th century where almost all parts of the world has been uh, occupied. There are also areas which are being considered as dry lands. These are areas too dry for farming that cover approximately 20% of the Earth's land surface. The search generally lacks sufficient water to grow crops, and this is one of areas considered to be dry. Well, it may contain natural resources, notably, uh, much of the world's oil reserves are found in regions which are uh, covered by the surface.
Now we have wet lungs. These are lands that receive very high levels of precipitation and may also be inhospitable for human occupation. These are lands which are located primarily near the equator. As I said earlier, this may be inhospitable for human occupation because of the combination of rain and heat rapidly depletes nutrients from the soil thus hindering agriculture. So in seasonally wetlands such as those in Southeast Asia, enough food can be grown to support a large population. Example is in the Philippines. Next we have cold lands and high lands. So much of the land near the north and south poles is covered with ice or the ground is permanently frozen or permafrost. So relatively few people live at high elevations, particularly in these areas, except those found in Latin America and Africa. Now, my question is what is density or population density? This is defined as the number of people occupying an area of land and this population density or density can be computed in several ways. It may be through arithmetic density, physiological density, or agricultural density. So what is this arithmetic density or aka population density? This is defined as uh, the total number of people divided by the total land area. So, in using this arithmetic density, information is easy to obtain using this. No? It answers only the where question or who is trying to live where. And, uh, However, in using other density measures, they are better at explaining why they are living in those areas. So, as you can see in the figure in the slides now, showing the arithmetic population density or the number of people per total land area, you can find there that the highest densities are found in the parts of Asia and Europe. So when you try to look at the figure, those which are being colored uh, dark green and green has a, a population density of around 100 per persons per square kilometer in the area. The next we have the physiological density. Physiological density is the total number of people supported by a unit area of arable land, while arable land is land that is suited for agriculture. So this is a better measure for population and the availability of uh, resources. So comparing arithmetic and physiological density will help us understand the capacity of the land to yield enough food for the needs of the people. As you can see in the slide, as far as the illustration is concerned, regarding physiological density, uh, you have there the Philippines with the 1,000 and above, above uh, uh, person per square kilometer of arable, arable land. Since uh, the country is an agricultural country, and added to that are other countries found in the Southeast Asia. And also with those uh, countries that can be found in other parts of the world, uh, particularly those with uh, 500 to 999 uh, persons occupying their square kilometer of arable land. So as I said earlier, this is a good measure of the relation between the population and agricultural resources in a society. 
Then we have agricultural density. This is defined as the ratio of the number of farmers to the amount of arable land. This uh, helps account for economic differences. So middle developing countries have a lower agricultural density it's because technology and finance allow few people to farm and still feed many people. So compared physiological density and agriculture to understand relationship between population and resources in a country. That would be all for our discussion this afternoon class and for your activity you have to get a copy of population distribution in your barangay and in a map locate areas which are densely populated and areas which are sparsely populated in uh, color areas showing physiological density and agricultural density again uh, thank you for watching this video see you in the next video